Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And in this video, we are going to be looking at a review of a gold for Riven main on the NA server. In this game, he gets a couple of kills early, but unfortunately is not able to carry his team. And so we're gonna look at what he could have done differently in order to win an unwinnable game. If you enjoy the video, consider subscribing to the channel because I'll be doing a lot more of these reviews in the future. And hopefully you can learn at least a little bit something from the game. So hey guys, I quickly wanted to talk to you about my course, The Ticket to Diamond Blueprint. It teaches you everything you need to know about how to climb to diamond and beyond in solo queue and gets you access to the private Discord as well. So if you want to take your game to the next level, then check out the blueprint in the description below and use code SEASON11 for $35 off until the end of this season. Diving into uh, the review, right off the bat, he's in a decent position knowing that his uh, jungler is start starting bot, uh, bot side. Excuse me. Um, unfortunately, or weirdly enough, I should say, the Lux is leashing. <laughs> it's going to be late to lane. Fizz is pinging it. Still waiting in the brush. Um, I guess he's going to look for an early cheese here. That's, I guess it's okay. Um, the GP has Dark Harvest. We'll just float on the ribbon first now. He's going for a full all-in. Smart knowing that Kane is near. Uh, missed some XP, which is unfortunate, but he does have a massive level advantage. Um, if I'm Kane, I'm looking to three clear and then look for a gank here. Uh, but we're going to look at a little bit of the micro here and see what happens. Um, is not playing out of range. Looks to punish the the minion. Misses the auto. You can just flash auto though here. Very well done. Okay, so he... Let's go back two seconds and I'll show you why that was really good. First of all, he's playing aggressive into a matchup that uh, Riven dominates. Like, this is a great counter matchup. And when... Uh, let's pull this up. He kind of takes a little bit too much poke, but knows that GP's passive is up, right? You can see the animation there, and you know he's going for this minion because it's low. And because of that, you see him start to walk at GP and start. Hopefully, he was able to do it a little bit quicker so he wouldn't have to flash here because he would be able to keep all of his autos and Qs. But he uses his Q here, has a stack still left and then flashes for the auto. Okay, and then when this happens, there's a couple things that you need to make sure you do in order to not throw the early game. So you know that GP has teleport up in that corner, okay? And Riven is low with Kane on this side of the map down here, right? So staying probably isn't the, the greatest idea at 200 HP. So we're gonna count the minions and see where the lane is gonna be. So you have three, four, five, six minions uh, furs, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven minions for Gangplank. So what you should do right here is run into either, you know, a bush over here or a bush down here and just recall. Um, and by recalling what she's gonna be doing is she's gonna force Gangplank to teleport to the wave in order to push this into um, Riven's tower right over in here so that it can reset and push in so he can recall or whatever. Um, if he, if Riven recalls here and Gangplank does not TP, then she's at a massive advantage because, because he has seven minions and she has six and the middle of the lane is right here, the wave is going to gather and push towards her. So by the time she walks back to the lane, she is gonna have a lot of minions stacked up and ready to go and she'll be at a massive experience advantage. So let's kind of see what um, he does here. We'll call him Thorn. He's going for a couple of the minion autos, so he decides to stay here. Yep, Gangplank teleports like he should because she's, she's really low. He's gonna let it push to him. She's gonna recall, okay. Gonna recall, and then he teleports to the tower. Okay, usually I would be okay with a teleport in the tower. Uh, in past seasons, it's allowed the cooldown of teleport to be shorter. Um, and now it just doesn't. Uh, you can teleport to a minion if you would like to. Um, because you know Kane started top side and has to path bot side, and you literally have vision of him down here with Rengar fighting him, you don't really need to hide your TP. Um, the the wave is pushing at him, so you can you can teleport on a minion um, unless you're worried about him setting up a barrel or something, he's really not at a level where he can take advantage of that. Um, and so teleporting to the tower is not really, you know, necessary. Now, if uh, Kane here started a uh, bot side and was pathing up, knowing that you didn't have TP would be huge, right? And so then TPing to the tower and then walking here would at least mask the animation a little bit and Gangplank would have to type or, mass, or spam ping your teleport in order to communicate that your teleport is down and that you're primed for a gank. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't happen here, but you teleport back to lane. Uh, it's a good teleport because you push the wave in and you need to match it or at least complete the shove. 
and uh, looking to play. So if we just take a look at the wave state, or let's look at items quick too. She should have gotten a, a long sword. Okay, Ruby Crystal and Tear. So Riven has a massive advantage in 1v1. He still, does he not? He started Tear, oh my gosh. Okay, so he should not lose anything for a while. He also has Dark Harvest and his passive. So the passive is the only thing, and then getting withered down by Q is the only thing that he needs to be scared of. And he, at this point with his item advantage and his XP advantage, should be looking to punish any play where Gangplank extends for a minion literally anywhere and can just go in and kill him. So we'll see kind of how he moves forward um, with that information. Get rid of that off the screen. Continue to poke down a little bit. It's taking a little bit too much. Gangplank's doing what he wants to, just withering him down. Giving him some things for free. He either needs to finish this push or all in when he hits level 3. Otherwise, he's just going to be fall a little bit too far behind in order for anything to happen. Uh, Wave is neutral here. He does not need to step up. Uh, but he is looking for an all in. He should step back after that. Oh, he wants to keep going. Gangplank will have the... Has a lower cooldown on his Q there. Okay, let's go back a little bit. He's going to win this fight anyway. I think he just gets the kill. He steps too far forward. But a way that he could win it even stronger here. Let's take a look. So, uh, you know Gangplank is level 3 here. And your wave is still pushing in, into him. So, you, you basically just want to kind of tether back and forth in between his range and his, you know, his Q range. Which is probably around here, right? And so, as he moves back... You can move in for a minion, you can, and then as he moves up, you can move back. And you basically just want to keep in that tether range just outside of this range right here so that you don't take any extra damage uh, because he takes damage from this barrel, he takes damage from a Q, and if Kane is here to help, like he's just not going to have the HP to win. Um, so unfortunately, he does end up taking this damage. But the Riven, is, like we said, is just going to win the all-in because of Conqueror and because of the items. And so after he gets this last auto off, he should back off. Because of the healing, because he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight minions, right? Auto attacking him, plus gangplank, and his Q coming up, and he doesn't have any cooldowns anymore. And he probably won't for another seven to eight seconds. And so it's going to be an auto battle with minions and gangplank Q. Probably not going to win that super hard. And especially when you're up and the wave is pushing against you without teleport, it's risky. So after he gets his auto off, he should have just ran back at, would have had, you know, 300 HP to, you know, 200 or whatever. And he's healing up, but with her burst and her damage and, you know, all of her abilities up, like she'll be able to easily go in and kill him. Gangplank is, you know, a little bit too close. The minions de-aggro, unfortunately. And then he just steps up too far for this minion here and she is able to get the kill. Okay, so after he gets the kill, uh, we know Kane is finishing his bot side it, at 350. It is... Without Rengar having this scuttle done, we should assume that Kane is there. Now, we could have recently had information, like Rengar knew he was there, but he easily could have recalled and then run to the bot scuttle. Uh, so we need to, you know, keep in mind that uh, Kane could be near. So if we look back at the wave and look at it, we go, okay, we have five, six, seven minions against five. Right, And so clearly this is going to push towards Gangplank and freeze, but we know he doesn't have teleport. And if we look, if we're trying to find out where the enemy lane is and when it's going to crash into you know your minion wave right here, we can look at our own wave. And so we can say, okay, our own wave is just outside the second tier turret. So if we can use our Q to clear this, it will crash into the turret. Uh, the turret will get the kills for the XP. Gangplank won't get experience or gold from it. And it will start a slow push as the waves meet back probably in this area. And after three waves, right, that's, you know, uh, 90 seconds maybe, uh, it will, you'll have a fat wave of around 15 minions at your tower. So it creates a massive advantage. Uh, so he should shove in the wave here and then recall. But we'll see what happens while being cognizant that Kane could come, but it's definitely worth it to try and get the shove in. Um, if it's close, like let's say the minions are a little bit farther ahead here, and these four range minions are going to stay outside of uh, tower aggro, what you can do is 
either with your minions or if you're healthy enough, you can walk through the lane. You know Gangplank's not gonna be here in time, right? You're kind of gambling with where the cane could be, but you're walking through, you're gonna pull these minions away so that all of your minions here can fully push into the tower. And so uh, you can also, because you know Riven only has 350 HP, what he could do in this situation is just walk here and these minions will kind of sway from their path, allowing these minions to get in range of the turret so that it can fully reset and start the slow push. So let's see what happens here. They meet, I'm gonna speed up a tad. He's pushing one too many waves here, but he's gonna get away with it. It's just staying under tower with 300 HP at that point when the wave is already shoved in is just risky, uh, but it ends up paying off. So he recalls. Uh, and as Gangplank in this situation, he probably doesn't have the... If you had wave clear, uh, if you had a champion with great wave clear, I'm thinking, shoot, I don't know, set or just a champion that can clear waves really well. Wukong is decent at it. Any champion with TMAC can do it. Um, if they're, if the first wave here is uh, a minion wave of six minions without a, uh, a cannon minion, you can fast shove it into the enemy turret so that they can lose some minions and then you can get you know some vision down here or whatever. Um, but otherwise, if you're not doing that, what you wanna do is slow push. And so you should be waiting until there is no HP left on this minion in order to kill it so that you can slowly push the wave in and get an advantage with minions so that you know if you fast push it, you're gonna be here in the lane against a Riven who can chase you down and all in you with no minions to back you up. Now he's already down two kills, so it probably doesn't matter. Riven can kill him with a full wave, but G, uh, GP would have, you know, 10 to 12 minions helping him in that fight just in case. Um, so let's kind of see how he plays it. So he is last hitting it, playing it slow. He has Kane on his side of the map as well. You want to create a massive push here so Kane can come in for this gank. He wants to keep whittling this Riven down, kind of bait her in so that Kane can get something done here. And yeah, Riven should just play back and play safe, only get free minions, basically just getting the melees here. And then, yeah, playing back as much as possible. Luckily, he has this warded, so he sees the gank is coming. Gangplank tries to get some poke off with his barrel and ends up shoving the wave, unfortunately. Uh, so it's a great wave spot because uh, Riven is going to hit level six in a second and can just straight up all in this guy, if not literally right now. So we can, decides not to go for it, wow. A level four Kane scares him off. Okay, so in this mini, right? Always look at the wave state after uh, there's a kill or someone recalls, right? So we have, well, this one minion's about to die. So you're gonna have four minions, so one, two, three, four, five, six minions. So uh, there's basically tiers in um, when a wave will freeze. At about here, if there are uh, seven or six minions, the wave would freeze. Um, so there's plus one. Uh, at, at around here, you have plus two. So you need two more minions on the other side to freeze. So that turns into eight against six or you know whenever there's gonna be two more on the opposing side. And then right around here, you're gonna need three more. So this technically isn't gonna freeze, but it could because obviously we're checking in the middle of when these waves are crashing. This could turn into a freeze. Um, my recommendation, because Gangplank is gonna have to recall and come back, it's probably gonna be close enough where you can just hold it here you're gonna be level six and even if it pushes out a little bit it'll be a slow push in this area and you can just all in and by the time he comes back so i would pretty much only last hit and try to keep the lane uh the wave right outside of the tower so we'll put this on two times speed uh, and see what he does so he's last hitting good keeping it here keeping it here only last hitting game plank is running out of his fountain right now we're kind of starting a slow push in the other direction Right, only last hitting. You don't wanna push the wave too far where you can't look for an all in. He finally gets that coveted level six. The wave is still in the same spot, right? Perfect. Now Gangplank sets his pink ward down, Riven's level six and the wave is still in the same spot. Now, as we just said, there's a slow push that's happened. So there are six minions, nine against eight. So we're gonna start our slow push. Um, honestly, uh, Riven is gonna soak up this wave, this wave, and probably another one close to the tower, and is probably gonna hit level seven against uh, Gangplank's level five. 
If she can get a short trade in, she can definitely look for a dive if she knows where Kane is. So we're gonna keep playing this on two times speed as she's slow pushing the wave in to see what happens. And then we're about to look at you know what he could have done to carry this game, but we're making sure that our fundamentals in the laning phase are good and set so that we can get to the light games where we can carry more often. Okay, um, push that part of the wave a little bit too fast. Right, so now the lane is gonna crash and meet right around here instead of say here. You know, like that's why it's important if you're trying to think ahead of where the minions are gonna crash at because Gangplank is in a nice spot here where he doesn't really have to worry about an all in from this ribbon. Like he can just step back into his tower. He has his flashback up. He can let ribbon shove this into the tower and just kind of um, free farm until he's, you know, back to level six or level seven. Um, so Riven should be looking just to full reset this wave and then get out of there. He's not really worried about a um, fight or an all-in from Gangplank. Now, if Gangplank steps too far forward, you can go for a fight. Right now, Gangplank stepped too far forward here. You're level 7, and he's in lethal, right? Oh, whoops. Gangplank is in a situation where if she E R Q W, you know, R Q, that's kind of confusing. If she dashes into her ulti, stuns here, ult Q auto, whatever, like this is a free kill the next time he walks up. She could obviously, she could also pair it with her flash and there's nothing he could do about it. Um, I'm just kind of curious. If he doesn't go for a kill here, he's trolling, especially because we know where Kane is because of the fighting going on here. Sacking the Q, ERQ. Oh, he just gets level six. You're playing too far back when you have an advantage. Like he's in lethal, right? You know with your full combo with your ultimate, which is up, and your flash, like you can kill him easily. Even though he has his heal, even though he has flash, you at least force him out of lane if he somehow outplays you, but you have the advantage in this situation. So he, he does end up getting the kill here, as the feed says. So he's looking for it, right? Waste his heal a little bit too early. ER flash, ER flash, nice. Auto, cancels the auto, but because the heal is down, is able to get the the kill. He should shove this in and then try to get a tower plate. He could probably do one more minion because it's not a cannon minion. Okay, I'm a little bit confused. Earlier, he was more zealous with shoving lanes. Now he does not want to do an extra free lane plus the extra the tower plate. That's 100, 100, that's 260 plus gold that he's missing out on here. Gangplank's dead for another three seconds, plus 30. He's 33 seconds out from hitting, getting back to lane. He could shove this lane in, get the tower plate, and then go back. Let's, as an experiment, let's see what he ends up recalling with. He buys Iron Spike Whip and Ionian. So he could have completed his phage, or he could have at least gotten another, he couldn't have completed the phage. He could have complete, uh, completed a longsword um, to help him with his phage. It's just an extra portion of damage that helps him in that situation right um like think through these things like you're going to be getting back at the same kind at the same time as gangplank but you didn't use anything with the advantage that you had for a second you knew kane was on the bottom side of the map you would have to run straight top in order to stop you plus you're fed and he's not as you can see they're up seven to two they end up losing this game and he's in the driver's seat so in order to win these games you, you have to win them before you lose them, right? And Riot is putting measures in like this 300 shutdown gold where you will just lose the game if you don't keep pressing your advantage. So I guess we can go back to, uh, we'll play it on like three times speed now. Um, we've gotten all the, the nuances of the laning phase out of the way. Um, I'm gonna quick disable uh, chat if possible. I don't know, actually, I don't know how to do that quickly. We'll just play it on four times speed. Observe the Riven and just see what happens. He should be looking to press his advantage as hard as possible. He's two levels up. Gangplank has Phage. No starting item. I don't count tier. It does nothing for him. He should be looking for stuff here. Down at two times speed. Kane is there. He should be looking just to build slow. Okay. When you're in, a, when you have a lead in a counter matchup like this, where any sort of advantage will just let you win a fight outright, you should be looking to slow push so that you can freeze or all in like she just did. Because when you have your, when you're crashing the wave into the tower, especially in a slow push, you can take these tower plates. You deny, you know, two waves of minions. So at this point, freezing doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Actually, I take that back. 
Because her team is so far ahead, freezing here could work. Okay, so either slow pushing or freezing both have their advantages. Because tower plates are still up and she has the damage to get them and get the kill, I prefer she goes for that. Um, but freezing is an option. So she just leaves her wave. At this point, she just needs to slow push this into that wave. She's going to give up a freeze. I guess we could talk about the wave management there, but I guess she could go look. Like she doesn't know where this guy is. No way this guy just dies. He just dies, doesn't he? What is going on? Okay. Pressing her advantage, I guess, right? Pressing the advantage. Rengar ults. Yeah, definitely don't die that. Or, or dive that, excuse me. Kill this wave and then get the heck out. You have mid missing. Kane is relatively strong. Okay. Get out. Don't fight this. Gangplank also has teleport. And he's up. Okay. So if we can, if you see at the bottom here, Riven doesn't get any more kills the rest of this game. So for the next two minutes, we're gonna play, we're gonna run on two times speed and just see where he could have pressed his advantage more. If we want to look at the macro game, I don't know how to turn on dragon timers. If someone can tell me in the comment section below how I turn on the dragon timers in the replay, that would be incredibly helpful because I have no idea how to do it. Okay, let's look at the scoreboard here and see. Um, I'm assuming dragon is up in probably two minutes because they got it earlier. The, the timer isn't on the map yet. My guess is two minutes. Um, Rengar super ahead. So he wants to fight with Rengar as much as possible, except, you know, just now uh, because Gangplank was up. Mid was, you know, gone. It was a 2v3, not worth the potential risk. Uh, Fizz is up in CS, uh, level 9 can probably do a lot of damage, and then Sivir and Soraka are just even. So, looking to fight for this second dragon, you know you're, uh, Riven's going to have her uh, mythic item at that point, might have it now. Close, very, very close. Goes for survivability, okay, this is good. Um, so, the last item to complete... Um, gore drinker here is iron spike uh, excuse me phage right and a lot of people because they're playing an ad champion like riven will just oh my circle's a little bit different on the recording uh we'll just take longsword here but riven knowing that she's four no she's a 400 gold shutdown she has the damage in the levels to just kill anybody she wants you want survivability you don't want to build full glass cannon because if you die you give over so much gold so getting the ruby crystal here instead of the longsword is actually a really uh really great thing that he did I don't know if that was on purpose, but if it was, good stuff. You're thinking about the game. So he runs back top. Wait, he teleports top? What in the world did I just... Wait. Okay, there's no reason for him to teleport top. Unless Gangplank is getting free tower plates. But I guess it keeps up the damage. I would personally save... I would just run to lane. Riven gets to lane very quickly. He has full tier 2 boots. Save teleport for dragon. Okay. Avoiding poke. Looks all in. Nice. That's good. Uh, Kane is there. Is very fed. Then just kills him. Okay. It's just simple. He doesn't need to teleport to lane here. Uh, where is Kane when he teleports? Kane is on the top side of the map. He sees this. He stops his recall. Because he knows if you kill somebody that just uses their teleport, you put them super far behind. And Riven has shut down. Now, this is a risky gank because she's level nine, almost as Gore Drinker, you know, finished. If you don't get the kill, she there's a potential that she double kills and the game is actually over. Right. But Riven should not have used her teleport here. It's a it's a random use. You don't your jungler's not even on the same side of the map trying to get an objective. You should just save it for this second dragon. Just save it for that dragon. So ends up dying. Happens, right? What are the Oh, Kane looks to go on some sort of tear here. So on to two seconds. Okay. Gangplank is able to get three tower plates, get him back in the game and assist. His team starts inting. Right, Kane. Now, now Riven could be complaining. Oh, like Kane is just killing all my team, which he is. Kane is doing a very good job in this situation. But look at this. He got 700 gold from the kill on Riven. Went from two to one with items to uh three and one, right, with Gore Drinker and uh, Red Form completed. So he's massive right now. 
because of the kill that Riven gave up by this simple teleport. Now, that probably didn't single-handedly lose them the game, but it put them behind because it gave a massive advantage to her team. Right, so these little things matter. They stack up. So that one shutdown kill turns into a triple kill here, which turns into an unstoppable cane for the rest of the game. So there's not going to be a ton to watch after this. You just have to be careful. When you have a lead, you have to protect it. You have to baby it. Every every motion, every rotation, every lane that you walk to, every decision that you, you make has to be babied with the intent of keeping your lead and helping your team as much as possible. In that situation, she helps her team by teleporting into Dragon. That's how she wins. By just by chilling out, trying to get a kill here, maybe, without wasting teleport, and then going into Dragon, and then with her advantage and Rengar's advantage, they don't lose that 5v5. Now, team fighting is risky, and she probably should have, you know, not died here. But it's just something to think about. Let's see what happens after this. And tuning a lane against Gangplank. He's finally getting some levels. He probably is Sheen at this point. Just hurts a little bit more. But he should be looking at a combo here. A short combo to set up um, an all-in. But instead he's just he's in he's in range to keep getting poked down. Kane they, they just spotted Kane on this pink ward. And she's not doing anything about it. He just shoves the lane into him. So constantly shoving lanes like this into a champion that scales like gangplank just helps them out you're not gaining an advantage you're not getting you know vision deep you're not invading you're not helping you know mid lane or anything you're just giving them xp and allowing them allowing them to farm safer continue to build those slow pushes into the enemy tower so that if they mess up if they step too far forward they're massively chunked so that they could be prepped for a dive you call rengar up here but rengar can't do anything he's trying to gank here he has his ultimate up but you just shove uh, the wave under the tower with him at 100% HP, you can't do anything. Rengar's looking for a play and you're not giving him one by slow pushing the wave by letting it or letting it push to you when your jungler's around will help you get those plays off. But just randomly hoping that you get these minions isn't going to help you do that. Gameplay can do whatever he wants because as a melee champ, you have like this amount of range to go in. You just can't do anything. Let's keep going uh, to see what happens. So Rengar is looking to make a play, tries to make a play bot, because he just forces it. He was trying to help top lane. Trying to help top. But Riven didn't give him an opportunity. And so he forces something bot lane and dies. Now, did his jungler in? Yes. But did part of it stem from his decisions that he made top lane? Also, yes. Even in the top lane, the lane that people say is an island, it matters. The small decisions do add up to what happens in the game. And sure, maybe he was unlucky that he got killed by Kane there, given the shutdown. That happens. But they had a great opportunity to take this full tower, um, get steal all his jungle camps, take these objectives, if she was slow pushing the wave in, if she was freezing the wave, or at least letting it push to her so that Rengar could gank. He has no way of getting away except, except his flash. Riven has four gap closers, and Rengar has an ult which lets him, you know, run fast and jump on people. <laughs> and they can literally just get a free kill. And so, Dragon is up now, and because of... They couldn't get it. If Rengar got that play off top lane, they're trading everything. They, they get the Rift Herald here. They get everything. They get top tower. But instead, they just lose this dragon. So, let's go a little bit to the late game. We can kind of see what happens here and how the mid game kind of unfolds. But let's go to, um, let's see, what's a big, let's go a little bit of macro here, 22 minutes, and just see kind of what's going on. This will be the last part of the video. Okay, so let's just take it. Uh, it's always good to look at, at the game and see what's going on. Clearly... You have two hyperscaling champions in Gangplank and Kogma, uh, but they're both currently behind. Uh, Kogma's somewhat even two items is going to be a, a mediocre threat right now. He's not, you know, insanely strong until he gets to three items. Kane, though, on the other hand, is about to get three items. Very strong, ten and three. He's level twelve, um, almost, you know, tied for the highest in the game. Uh, Riven's team is actually relatively strong right now. Level 13 on Fizz is still amazing. He's soaking up XP. He almost has a full two items. He can do some damage, like killing the Cog and the Gangplank in teamfights. 
But what his team needs to realize is they need to get anti-healing one for the cane, uh, for the gangplank. And honestly, that's pro when you have a champion that's as fed as Kane is, if it was just him, that would be enough, right? Because if they don't get anti-healing, they, they can't kill him. And you can see he's building death stance. He's looking to survive and heal as much as possible. Um, so they need to focus him and get anti-heal. But let's look at our team and see who has anti-heal. Soraka, and that's it. So you're hoping that Soraka either hits him with an auto attack. No, no, it has to be his Q or the silence. You're hoping that one champion on the team hits him every four seconds with her abilities in order to take or apply some grievous wounds, right? That it's being irresponsible in the game, especially at this point, people's mentals could be out of it. You still have a shot to win the game if Kane ints. And one of the ways you can help him uh, decrease his survivability is by building grievous wounds in the situation. Um, if we look at towers, um, only the bot tower is down here. Dra uh, Baron is up. He has teleport, only teleport on the team, and he's walking top lane when there is a wave pushing towards him in the bot lane. And so Soraka's, or sorry, uh, Sivir's randomly doing a camp here. In this situation, Riven needs to path bot from spawn, right, to this wave, and then push it up, because Gangplank's still 0-4. He can't fight Riven. Now, if Kane comes, it's a different story. But if Kane comes, it allows um, her team to, ha to have Rengar and Fizz great at finding picks. They're in a 4v3 around Baron where they can potentially get picks and secure Baron and swing the tides of the fight. But by running top, you're guaranteed to st keep starving your ADC and force. They're probably going to have a 5v5 here. That just That's my guess based on the positioning in this game. So Riven should not be here. He should be in the bot lane. And the reason he should be there is because he's the only one that has teleport. Baron is up. Dragon is not yet. Um, if Dragon is up, I would probably have him stay top because Dragon would probably be the one that's focused a little bit more over Baron. It's just safer to take, right? And so Kane, wanting to be a jungler that's near the objective, is topside, okay? So he goes topside, and Riven is very overextended. And guess what? He gets ganked. And he dies. My guess is that they lose Baron here. Let's see what happens. Kane hyper focuses a squishy target. Is he able to flank other people? Goes on Soraka, which is smart. Sivir has no damage. And they get Baron. Now, it could have been one of, you know... Riven's teammates that pushes up here, but the tower is not there, right? The way that the minion will hit, it will be in this area. If you can see that on the map, I don't know why that's 50% opacity. I don't know what I did. <laughs> I just turned on the opacity on accident. But the wave will be down here, not all the way up here where he can pick, where he can get ganked. So just minor macro moves could change that so much. He could pull the cane down here, run away because it's Riven. And, and, and Red Cane is fast, but not that fast. If you dodge his knockup, he can't really get on top of you. And then you allow your team to have a 4v3 with two people that are great in small skirmishes, great at getting, at getting picks, allow them a chance to get Baron. But because of this late game positioning, throws a kill, team dies from a full 5v5, and they lose Baron. All right, guys, and that's it for the review. Hopefully you learned a little bit something about how to continue to carry games um, that seem unwinnable like this Riven in this situation and how you can continue to push your lead and, and get that juicy LP. So guys, uh, go check out the Ticket to Diamond Blueprint if you haven't yet, um, and I'll see you in the next video.